Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in this video, I'm going to solve a circuit analysis problem by my colleague Bruno Frazier using a method of superposition pioneered by my other colleague, Marshall Leach. In this problem, we have a 12 volt source that's sandwiched between two 2K resistors. And then we have a 1K resistor over here. And then we have a current controlled voltage source. Notice that the minus terminal is facing upward. The voltage is 2000 IX, where IX is the current measured going down the 2K resistor on the right. The problem is to compute a Thevenin equivalent circuit looking into the right side of the circuit. Now, the usual way to find a Thevenin equivalent circuit is I would find the open circuit voltage, then I would short this and find the short circuit current, and you could divide the open circuit voltage by the short circuit current in order to get the Thevenin resistance. Here, I'm going to use an alternative technique. I'm going to imagine that we have some sort of external current load this is not really part of the circuit. This is just something I'm introducing to find a Thevenin equivalent. And given that, I'm going to see what kind of voltage is induced. Okay, so to solve this problem, I need to solve for the controlling variable Ix. So I'm going to solve this using Marshall Leach's superposition method. So in turn, I'm going to turn on each of the sources while deactivating the other two. And Quite importantly, I am going to go ahead and deactivate the controlled source while looking at the independent sources, which the textbooks tell you you can't do, but I believe Marshall, and Marshall told me that I could do this, so I'm gonna do it. Okay, so first let's check out that 12 volt source. So I'm going to deactivate the current source by opening it up, and I'm going to deactivate the controlled voltage source here by shorting it out. And I'll call that case number one. So I'll have my 12 volt source here. I have 2K and then I have 1K in parallel with 2K. And so let's see, how much is that? Two times one is two over two plus one, which is three. So that's two thirds K. Okay, so now to figure out what Ix is, or at least the contribution associated with this 12 volt source, I can just use Ohm's law. So Ix is going to equal 12 volt divided by 2 plus 2 thirds K. Oh, that's not a very good 3, is it? That will be 36 volt over 6 plus 2K, which is 8K. So let's see, I can simplify this to 9 over 2 milliamp. And there's a couple things I need to do. One is notice that the arrow is coming out of the minus sign here in terms of the way the conventions work. So I actually need to put a minus sign here. So minuses are on everything. The other important thing I would like to do is put a superscript one here to remind myself that this isn't the full IX. This is only the contribution to IX from this 12 volt source. And let me rewrite it up here. So I'll write Ix1 is equal to minus 9 half milliamp. Okay, so next I would like to focus on this artificial current load that we added. So when I deactivate the other sources, I'm going to short out this 12 volt source. And I'm also shorting out the controlled source. All right, so for that case, I have my current source here. We have 2K, and then we'll have 2K in parallel with 1K, which we figured out was 2 thirds K. And I need to figure out the current that's flowing down the 2K branch here. All right, so I have a current divider. So Ix is equal to this current, and I'll have 2 plus 2 thirds in the denominator. And in the numerator, I need to put the resistance of the resistor that we're not flowing through. So that's going to be 
two thirds, and there's a K up here and a K down here, and those Ks cancel. The other thing I should be careful with ahead of time is that these arrows are going opposite directions. So let me make sure I have a minus here. All right, so I have minus I naught, and then I have two over six plus two. So let's see. Oh, let me be careful not to forget the minus again after making a big deal about that. So that's two over eight. So that's minus I naught over four. And again, I'm going to put little superscripts here. So I'm going to put a superscript two to remind myself that this isn't the full IX. This is just the contribution from this current source. So let me write that up here. All right, IX2 is equal to minus I naught over four. Okay, the last source we need to look at is this controlled voltage source here. And in order to deactivate the other sources, I'm going to open up the current source and short out the voltage source. So I'll need to figure out what this current is, and I really just have a voltage source and a network of resistors. And I'm gonna work this out a particular way. Let me copy the circuit here. So I'll have my voltage source 2000 IX, and then I have 1K, and then I'll have 2K and 2K, and then the current here is IX. All right, so how about this? Let me first find the current here. Let me call that IX prime. So this IX prime, that's gonna just be this 2000 IX over the resistance of this total network. So the 2K resistors in parallel are gonna give me a 1K equivalent resistance and 1K over 1K, that's 2K. So that's just IX, nothing very exciting there. But that IX is being split between these two resistors. And what I'm about to write is going to look weird at first, but bear with me. IX is equal to IX over 2. Now, people will look at this and say, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense because this would mean that IX equals 0. But here's the distinction I want to make. I'm going to put a little superscript 3 here to indicate that this is the contribution to IX associated with this particular controlled voltage source. I am not putting a little 3 on the right because the IX on the right has to actually include all of these contributions. So let me copy this up here. I'm going to write IX3 is equal to IX over two. Now, using these superscripts is not something Marshall Leach does in his original paper, but I found it very helpful to do this in order to keep track of things. Oh, and I made the same mistake I made earlier. Notice the arrow is coming out of the negative terminal of this current controlled voltage source. So I need to put a minus here and a minus here, and I need to put a minus here, and a minus there. All right, so now we can find IX. IX is going to be equal to IX1, which is minus 9 over 2 milliamp, plus IX2, which is minus I naught over 4. I guess this isn't really naught. This isn't really a zero. It should be saying IO because O stands for output. Whatever. Anyway, so then I also have IX3, which is minus IX over 2. Okay, let's see. Let me multiply everything through here by 4. So I have 4IX equals minus 18 milliamp minus I naught minus 2IX. And if I move this 2IX over, I have 6IX, which is equal to minus 18 milliamp minus IO. So I could say IX is equal to minus 3 milliamp minus IO over 6. Okay, and so now that I know what IX is, I can find out what VO is from Ohm's law. So that's this 2K, the resistance, times IX. And what is IX? 
while IX is minus 3 milliamp minus IO over 6. So that's minus 6 volt minus IO over 3 K ohm. Now, if I think about what this represents for a second, this looks like some voltage source minus the loss of voltage across a resistor according to the current flowing. So my Thevenin equivalent voltage is minus 6 volts, and my Thevenin equivalent resistance is one-third K ohm. So my Thevenin equivalent circuit looking to the left here is just a 6 volt source where let me be careful to put a minus sign on top here because it was negative and a one third k ohm resistor and this is the same result that professor fraser found in his notes using more traditional techniques of finding the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current now, I'm not claiming that Marshall's method of superposition in this particular context is necessarily better or easier in any particular sense. It's just another tool in your toolbox. Before we close out, I wanted to mention that the idea of using superposition on Dr. Fraser's problem came from looking at a different example, this example four in Marshall's paper on superposition with dependent sources.